Coming up on ATV News, multiple guns were stolen from a pawn shop. What the police want from you. There's a new distracted driving law. That means no more selfies for you. Tuition for Utah State students is seeing a change for the upcoming fall semester. But is it a positive change? In weather, the last couple of days have been chilly, but I'll show you when you can put the jacket away. Coming up on sports, the USU football team is already planning for fall. I'll show you who's shaping up and stepping up. It's all coming up on ATV News. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Brandon Fonda. And I'm Ileana Barunda. Two men are on the loose today after stealing guns from a local pawn shop. Becky Eisenhower is live in the newsroom to tell us what happened. Becky? Thanks, Ileana. I actually went down and talked to the pawn shop owner and he told me what a big loss it was for him and his store. In fact, it was so big that a federal agency is involved and has offered a reward. This is Nor Hendricks, owner of the Fast Cash Pawn Shop on South Main Street in Logan. On February 8th, the shop was broken into by these two men who were caught on the outside video cameras around 1 in the morning. One man is described as a heavy-set male wearing a mask and a backpack, and the other suspect is described as a slim-billed male who is wearing a hoodie. Two men broke the glass next to the front door, which is now boarded up. They walked past the front desk and turned right into the gun room. It's clear to us that the burglary was uh, targeting firearm um, theft. The two men came into the pawn shop and threw a rock through this case, which used to be covered in glass. Eleven handguns just like these were stolen by the two men. And they're going to end up in criminals' hands most likely, so, you know, we don't know what's going to those people are going to do with them and that does uh, you are concerned you know because the robbery involved firearms the Logan Police Department has paired up with the Bureau of Alcohol Tobacco Firearms and Explosives and is offering a five thousand dollar reward we've partnered up with them and they've put up the uh, reward money for the capture of these particular people it's been a month and uh, we haven't had no solid leads yet so by doing this we're hoping uh, you know, to get some leads. What we'd like is people to hopefully come forward and say, yes, we know who that is. Love nothing more than catch these people and get the guns retrieved. Nor said he's had people break into the store before, but none involving a federal agency. So this is pretty big for his store as well as Cache Valley. Back to you, Ileana. Thanks, Becky. If you have any information on the burglars, call Detective Robert Olson at 435-753- 7555. You may have seen a red moon in the sky Tuesday morning and wondered what it was. But don't worry, this isn't anything out of the ordinary. It was just your typical lunar eclipse. The eclipse started around midnight and took nearly an hour and a half to reach the midpoint. At this time, if you were looking up at the sky, you would have noticed the moon had an orange hue to it. Some students at Utah State went up to the observatory on campus to get a better look at what they say is a cool event. The cycle finished around 3 in the morning and the moon was back to looking like normal. A lunar eclipse happens when the moon passes through the Earth's shadow, blocking the sunlight from reflecting off of it. However, the moon never goes entirely dark. It can be red, orange, or even have a copper tone. The reason the moon is red is the same reason our sunsets are red. Okay. What happens is when the light is passing at a low angle through our atmosphere, the blue light gets scattered out of it, leaving only the red. If you missed it this time, don't worry. You will have three more opportunities to witness a lunar eclipse in, in the next year and a half. It will happen once more this year on October 8th and twice in 2015 on April 4th and September 28th. The next time you're driving, you might want to think twice before calling your mother-in-law. No, not because she's evil or crazy, but because in a few weeks it will be against the law. We went out to show you exactly what changes the new law will bring. A new law will try to shift your habits every time you take the wheel. 
Habits that take your hands from controlling the car to controlling your phone. Distracted driver amendments. That's why Utah lawmakers passed a new distracted driving bill, which says a person may not use a cell phone while operating a moving motor vehicle on a highway in this state to manually write, send, or read a written communication. You basically can use voice actuator. You can talk to your phone and have your phone do whatever you tell it to, but you can't use your hands to, to, to manipulate your phone. Which he thinks will make Utah roads safer. People need to remember this is this is a, a enormous responsibility to operate a vehicle and we got to do the best job we can and, and this law helps us do that. And drivers will have to change fast. Come May 13th when the law takes effect, local law enforcement doesn't expect to show much leniency. We're just going to keep enforcing it the way we have been. And, and I don't suspect, you know, it's not going to be a huge transition. Picking up your phone to dial, search the web, check your email, take pictures, use apps, even flip through your music. All considered distracted driving under the new law. It's a good thing I'm not actually driving. And this is just a green screen. But for people actually on the road, the new law is bringing some mixed reactions. I think that the new law is a good idea. It will reduce a lot of accidents. I definitely think it's a good law. But for others, I think it's dumb. I used to be a Especially when it comes to music. I don't really see that big of a difference between me pushing the radio and like changing everything on there to me pushing the arrow on my phone. I'll probably still do that until I get a ticket, if I get a ticket. Now, if you do get that ticket, it will cost you 100 bucks, but not everything will get you pulled over. You can still pick up and talk on your phone if someone has called you, and you can still continue to use your phone as a GPS. You might be paying less to attend USU after the tuition changes go into effect. Starting next semester, if you're an Aggie that qualifies for in-state tuition, you'll pay the same price for classes whether you take them online, in the traditional face-to-face -face setting, or through the satellite broadcast network. Until now, USU students paid up to 60% more per credit for online courses versus traditional on-campus ones. Those who helped with the online tuition conversion say that this is a direct response to the way students take classes in the 21st century. We have seen uh, and have been watching uh, uh, closely the last couple of years the uh, number of USU students that are taking both traditional courses as well as online courses. That number has risen pretty dramatically the last couple years and so what that is telling us is that students want to be able to take uh, different types of courses. USU's tuition plateau is being lowered from 13 credits to 12 meaning you can enroll in 18 credit hours each semester and only pay for the first 12. Coming up, the Huntsman School of Business received a large donation, but where's it going? People were running for cancer. How their exercise may help you. You can sit with me, imagine what you'd see if every child had a book to read. So the mission is for us to get a book to read. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Up, college is hard. Down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up so every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Welcome back. People across Utah came to the field house to pull an all-nighter in a fight for your loved ones. We went out to Relay for Life to see how you can support the cure. <laughs> Here at Relay for Life, people are camping out in support of cancer research. It was actually a lot better turnout than we had thought. We actually thought we'd only have about 250 to 300 people here. But by 11 p.m., nearly 500 people were already in the field house. And we're expected to have those numbers growing throughout the night. People can sign up to be on teams, and each lap helps donate money. Oh! 
Once they sign up as a team captain, they pay a one-time fee, about $10, and then the rest of the team can just register underneath them. This year, 36 teams raised $11,824. And you can also participate in bra pong, cornhole, or a silent auction. We even have a photo booth so that friends can get their pictures taken together. And we also have a table, I thought this was really cool, a table set up so that people can write letters to children with cancer at Primary Children's Hospital. We have luminari bags that we'll line the track with, and it's really sober and very emotional. And here at Relay for Life, every few hours, symbolizes a different stage of a cancer patient's journey. In the morning, the sunlight symbolizes hope. Uh, the people here tonight are troopers. They're going all night, so I think it shows a lot of dedication and sacrifice to come out for a good cause. And all proceeds go to the American Cancer Society. We're getting there. We'll find a cure. The money doesn't just help fund new medicine, but also goes toward making new cancer facilities. For the second year in a row, a hospital in our area is celebrating a national award. Logan Regional Hospital is among the top 100 Truven Health Analytics hospitals in the nation. The Truven Award is not something hospitals can apply for, and unlike other awards, hospitals do not pay to display the honor. Instead, Truven Health researchers analyze publicly reported data to rate a hospital's performance based on safety, quality, service, and value. It really comes down to just the service with the patient and making sure that we're delivering uh, safe and high quality care but at a low price and in a valued price. So we don't really we don't really think this drives volume. We, we hope it drives um, confidence and and um, an assurance that this is that Logan Regional Hospital is a safe uh, uh, well-run and also a high service level hospital. It's what we strive for every day. According to Truven Health, if all hospitals in the U.S. performed at the level of this year's winners, nearly 165 additional lives could be saved and nearly 90,000 patients could be complication free. The John M. Huntsman School of Business is honoring industry leaders for the donations that the school has received over the past seven years. Those donations now total $60 million, and more than half of that will go towards creating better learning environments for the business students. $42 million will go toward the construction of the new 117,000 square foot Huntsman Hall building, which will have 21 classrooms and 21 meeting rooms to meet the students' needs. USU President Stan Albrecht said that he was grateful for the donations and with the resources the school is building excellence. Coming up after the break, ATV's Bradley Wells will have your Cache Valley weather forecast. The current temperature in Logan is 55 degrees. Budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still buy me treats. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. Live with a human for a while and you get to know a few things. Like I know she does strange tricks for no treats. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? Welcome back. Well, outside is looking pretty nice. You can see there's people frantically trying to get across the quad. It's not really, a, though. A little chilly, but not too bad. At least it's sunny outside. Yeah, even though it's sunny, it's a little chilly, but, you know, yeah. better than yesterday. It was really overcast and really windy. And just like yesterday, or today from yesterday, the weather, the temperatures are on the rise, so we should be yeah. seeing some better temperatures. Let's take a okay. look at our national radar real quick and see how things are looking across the country. And in the national radar, uh, we can see that Michigan they are getting hit pretty hard, as well as Wisconsin. They're getting hit pretty hard with a storm. It's a lot of, lot of blue, which means there's a pretty, pretty big chance that they're getting a lot of snow there, right there. Also on the west coast of the country, Washington, they're also getting another storm. And now that storm we need to kind of pay attention to because that's the one that could be affecting us on Friday. That one 
could give us a 30% chance of rain, but we'll see what happens. It is on its way. In Utah, though, we can see right here, there's not a lot really going on in Utah. Just southern Utah has a little bit, but look, taking a closer look at Utah, we can see that Salt Lake Valley, a little bit of scattered showers, not getting affected too much, but where we're up in Logan, really not getting anything. It is causing a little bit of cloud, but really it's pretty sunny, pretty good weather. Taking a look at our seven-day forecast, we can see that on Wednesday, which is today, the high was 56, it was cloudy, low of 32. Thursday, tomorrow is going to be a really sunny day, 64 degrees, the temperatures are on the rise, 39 low. And Friday, as I was telling you earlier, that storm is coming in. We may get a little bit of rain, it is a 30% chance, but even with the storm, we're going to be getting uh, 68 degree temperature. Saturday, 67 degree high, 37 degree low, partly cloudy. And Sunday, this is where things start getting really warm, 69 degree high, mostly sunny, 39 degree low. Monday, we're hitting 73 degrees for our high. Wow. Will be a little cloudy, but not bad. Tuesday, 71 degree high, mostly sunny. Temperatures are on the rise. The weather, it's pretty good for Logan up here. And we'll see if that trend continues throughout the next couple of weeks. Yeah, well, good. 60s and 70s, maybe I'm going to bust out the barbecue. I don't know. Yeah, people are going to be wearing a lot of shorts and sure. just in time for summer, right? Yeah. Thank goodness. Good. Uh, and also, I know sports, they are uh, they got to be happy. Tennis has been wanting to have oh, matches yeah. outside. And I know they have a couple of matches this weekend, correct? They do, they do. And it, hopefully it'll be nice weather for them. It was pretty nice for baseball this week, too, which is good. So coming up on sports, the USU Baseball Club had its first home games of the season. I'll show you whether or not they continued their winning streak. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Hey everybody! Heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile! Dang it. To the invisible jet! Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Welcome to this week's edition of ATV Sports. I'm Misty Inglet. Let's start things off with some football. After holding practices for the past couple of months, the football team capped off the spring with a friendly blue versus white scrimmage. The offense wore their blue jerseys while the defense was in white. With Chucky Keaton still recovering from his knee injury, Daryl Garrettson took charge of the first team offense and started the game, while Craig Harrison took command of the second string. With plenty of big plays to keep the crowd involved, the offense and defense both showed glimpses of what the 2014 version of Aggie football is going to look like. After losing key players on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball, coaches are looking toward underclassmen to fill in the cleats of graduating seniors. With spring practices over, it will be up to each player to stay in shape and be ready for team practices in July. I'm ready to play the season right now. You know, I wish we could, but there's a lot of improvement that we still have to make um, as a defense, you know, just individually with our physical, you know, makeup being getting bigger and stronger. If we have good leadership, we'll find out if it's great. I think we're going to be a good team, and it's a really small, small difference between being good and being elite and having a really special year, and I think the talents here. Even though Keaton didn't play during the spring game, Coach Wells said he is on track to start in the first game of the season at Tennessee on August 31st. Let's head to the mound with the USU Baseball Club as they took on Idaho State in their first home games all season. It was three strikes you're out for the Bengals over the weekend as they fell to the Aggies in a three-game series. The Bengals came in Friday night looking to tame the Aggies, but USU's club baseball team showed no mercy. The Aggies started off swinging with a 4-0 lead in the first and second innings. 
And things didn't get any easier for the Bengals in the third inning as the Aggies brought home four runners and held the Cats to only one run. Starting pitcher Robert Garrett had one of his best games of the season with eight strikeouts. Garrett made it all foul balls and empty swings for the Bengals until the seventh inning when they were finally able to get their bats on the ball. The Cats would go on to rally in the eighth and final inning, but it wouldn't be enough as USU sent them home with their tails between their legs with a score of 12 to 6. So it went good. I mean, we hit the ball really well at the beginning. We kind of became complacent towards the middle of the game. We stopped scoring once we hit 12. Um, and they started hitting the ball. They're a good hitting team. So, I mean, they started hitting it and they tried to come back and eventually we stopped them. Defeating the Bengals brings the Aggies to a 10-game winning streak. They look to continue that streak when they face the Weber State Wildcats this weekend at home. Keeping things on the diamond, we head over to the ladies with USU softball. After a weekend off from Mountain West play, the team is back in action this week with a busy five-game schedule. Their first matchup was a doubleheader yesterday against Weber State. After winning the first game, the Aggies looked to do it again the second game, but the Wildcats put up a fight. It was a no-score game until Weber finally got some hits in the second inning, and their number 25, Kylie Hogue, stole home, giving the Wildcats a 2-0 lead. But USU battled at the plate with Paxton Provost getting a single and getting on base, just in time for Samantha Larson to hit a home run to tie the score 2-2. Weber came out the next inning with a homer of their own, putting them ahead of USU 4-2. The Wildcats got hit after hit in the last three innings, scoring them four more runs. Weber threw several outs at first, holding the Aggies to only one more run the rest of the game. The Wildcats clawed their way to an 8-3 victory over USU. When Weber State got ahead, um, you could tell that our attitude kind of changed, which shouldn't happen. There have been so many times where we've had come from behind wins. So that's something that we have to work on as a team to no matter if we're down three runs or six runs, knowing that we can come back. The Aggies head to San Diego State tomorrow for a three game series against the second ranked Aztecs. We're going to break away from your typical highlight reel to bring you something different. Somehow, some way, we've all been affected by bullying, even professional athletes. But now, one NFL superstar is pay playing his part to educate kids about the effects of bullying. Deshaun Jackson, the electric wide receiver, is known for his heroics and over-the-top antics on the field. But outside the white lines, he is doing much more than just football. Jackson is raising awareness about bullying and even released a book called No Bullies in the Huddle to Educate Kids. Now he is bringing his message to Utah where he will visit East High School in May. Travis Clark, a former USU football player, is a mentor and friend to Jackson who pushed for him to come and share his message with the Beehive State. When Deshaun was a young kid, he was bullied. Um, it was unfortunate because he never shared that information with any of us. Uh, we're considered his big brothers. Uh, he never shared that. Uh, he just dealt with it. And, uh, and he's really, 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 really important, important topic in his career, in his life. So he wants to preach that as, across the country. Deshaun will be in Utah May 16th and 17th, where he will hold an anti-bullying assembly at East High and then move to the football field where he will teach kids skills to succeeding on and off the field. And guys, we actually have one more piece of breaking news from Aggie Sports. Former USU point guard Jennifer Schlott was signed Tuesday night to play for the Indiana Fevers in the WNBA. That oh, is awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Are there any other Aggies in the association right now? Actually, that's what makes it even more impressive is she's the first USU player oh, drafted. Really the first cool. one? She is. She's the first. So interesting. it's that's really great. cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks, Misty. And when we come back... The locals are painting where the other locals eat. What iconic places in Loken are going up? More options for food on campus coming your way. I'm Tamara Bradley. I'll tell you more in a live report. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you gotta make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000.
buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You come. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Welcome back. You've seen the construction on 700 North, but do you know what it's for? Our Tamara Bradley is live to tell us more about this new building. Tamara? Well, right now I'm in Luke's Cafe on the Quad, where you can see on the menu they have sandwiches and soups and wraps. But if you've ever wanted more options for your dining on campus, you're not the only one. Two Logan men are teaming up to give you a new kind of dining experience. Construction on Darwin Avenue is creating quite the buzz. What they're building? Darwin's Landing is the entire building, the student apartments, and then Morty's Burger Cafe is the bottom level. It all started with Ty Mortensen proposing an idea to a friend. He said, have you ever thought about doing a restaurant? Like, actually, yes, I have. The three-story floor plan is designed on a small lot on Darwin Avenue with dining areas on all three floors. We've already had our first reservations for the balcony area. And three student apartments for rent on the side. The students are already signing up. The project was already underway when Parker and Mortensen held a Kickstarter fundraiser to raise money for the project. We brought everybody together. It was, it was literally three, two, one, and the Kickstarter project launched. They passed their goal of $11,000 and made a total of $12,142. Right now, the building is, well, all wood. But when it's finished, Parker said the furniture will be made from reused wood from buildings on an old family farm. He's going to keep everything as rustic and local as possible, including the food. So the salads that we have will be locally grown lettuce, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers. While the sawdust won't settle for a few more months, students say they're excited for the new restaurant. We've loved living on Darwin, and that's why I think it would be it'll be a good project because it's so close to the campus, it's so close to everything. Oh, this is this is a great project coming together. So by next semester, you'll be able to enjoy this view from the rooftop dining area of Morty's Cafe. Tamara Bradley, ATV News. Well, the name itself of the cafe was taken from a nickname of Ty Mortensen's. And as was mentioned, a big part of the menu will come locally from Parker's Produce. Back to you, Brandon. Well, that would be great to have another place to eat on campus. Thanks, Tamara. The restaurant's grand opening is scheduled for August. Andrews is getting a makeover, but you won't be seeing any construction workers around the restaurant. Instead, you'll be seeing painters. This mural is a new addition to Angie's restaurant and can be seen on its north wall. Painters ranging from 12 to over 31 years old were picked to showcase their talents on one of Logan's most iconic buildings. The mural is intended to show off the rich history of Cache Valley and includes paintings of Old Main, Angie's in the Middle, The Temple, Jim Bridger, and even lesser known landmarks such as the Eccles Mansion. Painters say that the community has embraced the mural and are looking forward to the finished project. We've had lots of people as they drive by, as they come in and out of the restaurant, stop and look at it and talk with the artists, compliment the work, say how much they liked the cows or the jardine juniper, ask us if we know the history and educate us a bit more. I think it's cool that it's going to be here for a long time. You can expect to see the finished product on April 26th when Angie's has their grand unveiling. Thanks for watching us here on ATV News. Be sure to join us next time for Cash Rendezvous. Have a great week, Cash Valley. Coming up.